Welcome to the New York Business Leaders Podcast, presented by The Coil Group. We interview the most interesting and influential business leaders in New York and hear their stories of success, challenges, and lessons learned while building their businesses and personal brands. New episodes drop weekly, so please be sure to subscribe to get updates in your favorite stream. Without further delay, here's your host of the New York Business Leaders Podcast, Gordon Coyle. Welcome back to the show. My name is Gordon Coyle and I'm your host. In this episode, I welcome Devo Tyndall from Sprout Connectors to speak about building your personal brand, social media, podcasting, video, digital marketing, and so much more. Devo and his partner, Lisa Staff, are photographers, brand strategists, and visual storytellers, which in today's world is how small businesses and business owners and professionals and entrepreneurs and others connect with their followers, their customers, their prospects, and even their future prospects. It's a world often misunderstood and actually feared by many entrepreneurs. But as you'll hear and see, there's no real right or wrong when it comes to this medium. Well, let me correct myself. There are wrong ways to building your brand. You can be inauthentic, you can be fake, opaque, or you can be disingenuous. But I doubt that many that are listening would intentionally break these inherent rules of branding. I guess the real point is that for anyone sitting on the sidelines and thinking about starting a YouTube channel or getting on social media or creating a podcast or really just putting yourself out there, it's not difficult to get started. What may be holding you back is fear. Fear of failing, fear of putting yourself out there, imposter syndrome, and so forth. Devo's advice is get over it. If you've got an interesting story or brand or way of doing business or a special sauce, there are more tools than ever to let your story shine. You don't need to reach the masses to find success. You just need to connect with those that are valuing your message, whether that's one or two potential clients or dozens. They will find you. Now, if you have an interesting story that you'd like to share with my audience and yours, give me a call or drop me an email and let's chat and get you on this show. My contact info as well as Devo's will be in the show notes. So without delay, let's get on to the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the New York Business Leaders Podcast. Today, I've got uh, Devo Tyndall with us, who's uh, in a bunch of different businesses, photography, digital, creator. I'm not going to steal his thunder. So, Devo, can you spend a couple of minutes, introduce yourself, and tell us what you do, and then we'll kind of dive into it. I'm excited for this conversation. Hey, Gordon. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So uh, by trade, I guess I'm a, a content creator. Uh, I've been involved in the photography landscape um, basically since I was 12 years old. I didn't realize I could make a profession out of it until after my own wedding. And I just like, I spent a lot of money for a photographer that underdelivered. And at the time I was just doing it as a hobbyist. And I, I just thought to myself, I didn't realize that someone could really make a profession from doing this. It's just not something that I had any exposure to. So I started doing an apprenticeship with some local photographers, kind of learned the craft um, and then launched my own brand while I was simultaneously working in the corporate world, doing that stuff, kind of building up a portfolio, if you will, and experience. Um, and then in 2000 and roughly 2010, I just sort of quit the corporate world and jumped head, headstrong into this. Um, since then, I've sort of been a serial entrepreneur all my life, actually, since I was had my own lawn and lawn, uh, lawn mowing and landscaping business. And that morphed into some, some work that I did in college, similar to that for the local university. And then um, as a photographer, I recently expanded my business in 2017 with a partner of mine. Um, into more of the digital branding landscape. Uh, and we launched a new brand. Um, and now we're actually, funny story it is, we're actually niching back down. So we've picked up this, this massive amount of experience doing a bunch of different things in the branding, marketing, content space. Um, but we realized we were sort of getting a little bit diluted uh, and not really speaking to our true essence. And so we're now in the middle of niching that back down into a very focused business proposition that we're working on right now. So Okay, cool. So uh, branding, creator, digital, for a lot of people that may be listening or watching this, they may not know what all that means. So maybe we can just talk about 
what is a creator today in the business sense uh, for a lot of small businesses? What, what, how would you define it? I think it's, it's anything that enables you to tell what your brand or business does in, in a relatively short amount of energy and resources so that when people see that, read that, observe that, they clearly understand what it is that you offer to the world. What are they going to get from that service? Whether that be through video, whether that be through social media, whether that be through photography, whether that be the copy that's on your website or whatever it is, wherever it is, how you show up in this digital landscape today so that you're speaking to your audience, your avatar in order to build relationships with them, connect with them and ultimately trust rapport and then become a seller to them in some way, shape or form. Okay. That, that's a great way to put it. So, and that connects with what you have on, like, on your website, uh, <laughs> digital storytelling. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of funny. So, you know, social media blew up and then now everybody's on social media for, for different reasons. Uh, now, uh, I think a lot of people are that that process of being on social media has actually evolved exponentially um, over the last few years. And then even more so now that, you know, we were locked down for two and a half years and people were like pivoting and starting new businesses and starting new brands and all those different things. And so, um, but at the core of everything we do from marketing and branding, it really centers around our brand design and, and what it is that we offer to the world, because there are a thousand of you and a thousand of me that are all basically selling the same service. How can we decide distinguish ourselves from all of those other thousands of people, how can we share our value, our star seed, our superpower with an audience that is more in alignment with us and more inclined to buy from us? Because people don't really buy our products. Again, there are a million photographers here in Charlotte, for Charlotte, for example, and there's a lot of people in a growing city but my job is not to sell my photography per se. My job is to sell my story and why someone would connect with me because they're not necessarily buying the photography. They're buying that experience from me. They're buying that, that value that I bring to the table, that connection that I offer them, whatever it might be. There's different things that we sell ultimately. Uh, and everyone's sort of looking for that small piece of them in who they're doing business with. And so digital storytelling is telling that story, metaphorically speaking, if you will, around that campfire people are sitting around and connecting and putting the dots together and and finding common alignments with each other and the more you can do that the more you can connect with your theoretical buyer your potential buyer they're more inclined to build trust and rapport with you and sort of become your event your evangelist to everyone else they connect with yeah i think in my business which is insurance people everybody buys every business owner needs to buy insurance but like what you just said I'm hoping that they buy me. They're buying my expertise. They're buying my skill set. Because also, as what you said, is there's millions of me out there, of types of people like me who sell what I sell, who have access to the same products, the same services, but it's how you package it, how you build the relationship. So it's really that storytelling is all around buying me, buying you, buying whoever it is. So, so who are your who are your typical clients? My clients are anybody who is in the small business to medium-sized business who are looking for better content, better photography, better video that better encapsulates who and what they stand for so that they don't have to do it themselves and they can focus on the business that they're running and doing the other, the other pieces that are critical to their business. Our job is to come in and get to know our clients, better understand what their value is, and then create content centered around that so that they can use it on social media, on their website, in their branding and their marketing, whether we, we have clients that use our content for billboard advertising still, um, all the way across websites, television ads, um, YouTube podcasts. It just, it just depends upon anybody who has a marketing budget and realize that they're going to have to spend some money on content that really resonates with them if they're not able to do it themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a pretty similar, you know, target client to what I have who are business professionals, uh, business owners and small and medium sized businesses. And what I find interesting, even in a conversation this morning with um, a business professional who kind of had his toe in the water. I, I've been thinking about doing a podcast. I, I've been thinking about doing social. I've been thinking about doing video. And he says, you know, I see you're doing all these things. You know, how, how is it going? I said, it's going great. <laughs> well, how did you do it? I'm like, well, 
do you have like six hours? Because it's <laughs> going to take a long time to tell you yeah. about it. But the, the point is, is that I think that there's a lot of people, <clears throat> uh, especially professional uh, professionals, uh, lawyers, uh, accountants, uh, advisors, uh, financial advisors, bankers, private bankers, they have great stories and they want to tell it, but they're, they're afraid. They don't know how to tell that story. I think sometimes they get a little bit locked up in the technical thing about, oh, I need a special microphone like you have, or I need a $4,000 camera to do video. Um, but to me, you don't need all those things. I mean, I'm using a webcam, which worked perfectly fine for this. And I do have a good setup for my videos. But if you had to like it, talk to one of these people was like, well, I'd like to, what would your advice be? I think it's like, yeah, I think it's like anything else. And and you might hear a different version from different people, depending upon who you talk to, which really is the crux of what my value proposition says is that find the people who, who want to be your evangelist. Right. So I'm not everyone's cup of tea, nor are you. We're, we, we're looking for people who we connect with, just like in our, in our relationships offline, right? Our, our partners, our business partners, our friends, everybody sort of has some sort of alignment with us. And so that, that in of itself is sort of what branding and storytelling is. How do you tell that story to align with people? I think, um, I, I, and I, I fall into that same paradigm many years ago. We call it imposter syndrome. Uh, everybody thinks, why, why would anyone want to listen to Gordon Coyle? I, who am I? What do I have to offer the world? There's somebody already doing, doing that somewhere. There's many somebody's doing that somewhere and making millions of dollars from it. Like, I, how, can I, how can I beat that? But I, I would say reframe that juxtaposition is, is, is you're not trying to beat someone. You're not trying to compare yourself to someone. You're not trying to be like somebody else. Find what you do best and what you're passionate about and whether that's in your business or whether that's in something else and just start by starting, by getting out there and being some, let me reframe that, be be strategic and purposeful about your start by starting, right? Have a purpose behind it. Don't just get up there and start taking shameless selfies and hope that people are going to connect with you. And that might work for some people, but again, I'm not a supermodel and I don't have the, the figure or the face to do that. So my value proposition is centered around my business and my life and my, my, I'm a single father. So I talk a lot about that. And, and what I've done is I've sort of shaped this persona that matches who I am in real life. And I talk about that. I've, I've sort of pulled back the curtain on my life. I talk about my personal musings. I talk about things that I struggle with. I talk about my children. I talk about my business. I share my photography. And, and what's, what happens through that is the more you do that, not only do you gain more confidence in doing it, but you start to connect with people who are also sharing the same plight that you are or sharing the same journey that you are. And you build these, you build these little virtual bubbles of connections with people all across the globe. I have friends all across the planet um, that I have connected with either through my podcast or through my business or through social media. And I, and just this year, I launched my first ever mastermind. It's something I always wanted to get into. I've been in multiple masterminds, never really sort of fit what I was looking for. So for the last three years that I've been podcasting, I've carefully been sort of vetting and connecting with people on a deeper level. And now 10 of those people are in a mastermind that I launched. And, and, and that's sort of how social media works. You just have to start doing it and be purposeful about it and be consistent about it. And no, you don't have to have a $4,000 camera, um, but your content should be good. It should be relevant and you have to be consistent about that. And you can do that with the cell phone. You can do that with the webcam. You don't have to have all the fancy equipment. It can help, but it's sort of like the, the bad news bears, you know, like, they still went out and won the championship. They had shitty uniforms, but at some point you can upgrade your uniforms and look good. But right now, just get out there and start doing something with it. Yeah. I think the first step is the most difficult in anything that you do, whether any new challenge is, is, is the first step is really always the most difficult one to take. <clears throat> and my advice for a lot of the folks that I've been kind of talking to about this is, is that there's no one book, <laughs> there's no one website, there's no one consultant that can teach you all this stuff. It's really, if you have a um, personal intellectual curiosity, I think that's very helpful uh, to get things going. I'm always looking for like, who's doing what? How are they doing it? How have they figured out? And how have they crafted this or that? And that's fun for me, but for some people it's not. I just think that you have to start somewhere. And then kind of to what you also said is you just can't start and then stop and then start and then stop. 
you have to have a little bit of strategy behind it and have some consistency behind it. Um, you know, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, um, is there room in this world for the small business creator? It seems as though that the big brands have it all figured out, but what about the professional or the small business owner? I think there is, you know, there's obviously a shift going on across the planet in, in, in what you just talked about. You know, people are small businesses have are, are purposefully being washed out of the system. I, I, I do believe that. Um, but that's not going to happen overnight. And there's always going to be some space for, for, for small business. There's always going to be some space for entrepreneurs, at least in our lifetime, maybe not my children's, but that's a different rabbit hole discussion. Um, I think that, I think that there is room. I mean, there's seven and a half billion people on the planet, right? So you figure at least three quarters of those are online in some way, shape or form, even the children. So, you know, starting now by connecting with people in some small way is just going to start building that platform for you to have some sort of an audience as you grow into your comfort skin and you grow into your confidence around it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I make a living from it on, on multiple levels. So long and short of it is absolutely. But there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of, and, and today's consumers are really freaking smart because we have so much information at our disposal, right? Like I can Google you in a matter of seconds and understand who you do, what you do, why you do it, how you do it. I can go on YouTube and figure out the recipe to create basically anything. So our job as creators, how, how can we share our little small version of the world and stand out from everyone else in our own unique way and find a very unique tribe that we're trying to connect with. We're not trying to connect with everybody. We're trying to connect with a few small people who are really in alignment with us. And I would focus on that. I'd rather you, if you're just now getting into social media, I'd rather see you connecting with a smaller audience on a regular level than trying to speak to seven and a half billion people by buying fans or buying followers or doing all the things that you can get a larger audience that are just vanity metrics, right? Speak to the one or two, let them become your evangelists. And then those will sort of compound and grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. And I also think that there's, um, the, the vanity stuff and the buying of viewers and likes and people and connections um, is very short-sighted because that's not, that's never going to serve you and the algorithms are going to figure it out anyway at one point or another and kind of toss you into a black hole for a bit to punish you for that sort of activity, yeah. that kind of black hat activity. But um, what I'm kind of finding in, in my own kind of creator journey is, is that um, the more authentic and the more value I provide to people, uh, the more feedback I get, the more positive feedback I get. And I was saying to somebody this morning that uh, I'm amazed that when I get an inbound inquiry uh, from <clears throat> YouTube, uh, generally I'll get either an email or a phone call. And this person on the other end of the phone will say, yeah, I just watched your video on whatever insurance topic it may be. And I really enjoyed it. I'm like, well, okay, you enjoyed something about insurance. <laughs> I don't get that that often. But, but invariably, what I get is, I feel like I already know you, or some version of that. And even though I've probably heard it 40 times, it still shocks me. They spent watch, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes watching me on a video, and they feel like they know me. There is an immense amount of power there. Because knowing somebody and then that equates into a trust factor and regardless of whatever product or service you sell, trust is the fundamental driver of a, of a sales process. So to me, it's like, oh, I think I must be, you know, hitting pay dirt with this. This is interesting stuff. Is that kind of similar to what you see? Yeah, you're spot on. It, it, it all centers, again, going back to what I just said earlier, there's, as a consumers, we're so intelligent. I travel all over the planet and, you know, I go to a, a, I was just in a different city two days ago and we were looking for some place to eat, right? So you go on Google and you look, see what are the local restaurants and you read the reviews and you read what are their menu offerings. And like, you're very, very efficiently can make a quick decision on who you might buy from like Airbnb. Like I, I base my Airbnb rentals on reviews. I look at those reviews. What are other people saying about that? Your social media is no different. So 
you, this is an opportunity for you to get out there and show up and, and talk about what you do and why you do it and how you do it and talk about the things with some degree of transparency around what you struggle with. And when you do that and you show up consistently doing that and you have a purpose around it, because people are so smart and they have so much information at their disposal, they start to see that you're consistently showing up with the same sort of messaging. You're talking about the same sort of thing. You're adding real value. What is what, what can you do for me lately? That's basically what social media offers. What can you do for me lately? What is it I can get from your insurance channel that I might not get from somebody else who is not doing it? Well, for one, I get to know you. I put a, a name with a face. I see that you're in business. I see that you have a history around this. I see that you're connecting with other people. I see that other people are connecting with with you. And it's like, this sort of feels good. I might walk up to this guy and say hi to him. He has a friendly face. He's charismatic. He doesn't take himself very seriously. He's offering me real advice. Like I'm going to call this guy. He seems like a dude I might want to connect with. Right. And so that's just what social media is. It's, it's this, it's this sort of like allegory of remember the old school days. I think we're, we're sort of in the same age range. I would suspect when we had the yellow pages and there was like two or three bylines of what the company did and how they did it. It's like, yeah. this is yellow pages on steroids with the, <laughs> with the ability to connect with people in real time instead of having to thumb through it. It's it, there's never before been an opportunity like this. And if you can do it consciously with some self-awareness, you can really make an impact on the planet. Yeah. When, when you mentioned yellow pages, what came to my mind is you, and you don't have to name your business AAA. <laughs> exactly. <and> <laughs> Those are what hashtags are for now. That's right. <laughs> There's a new way to game the system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the uh, best way to game the system is to be who you are. Mm-hmm. Honestly, find what you're good at, find what your value proposition is and start sharing that with people. Give, come from a perspective of serving. How can you help other people's lives get better? If you're just out there to make money and you're only looking at the bottom line and you're only looking at what's, what's my ROI for being on Instagram, you're looking at it from the wrong perspective because that's not how social media works. That's digital advertising. That's where you should measure your ROI. But just genuinely, genuinely showing up on social media is your opportunity to connect with people. In your mind, uh, you've used the word consistent uh, a couple of times. How- can you kind of attach a frequency metric to uh, to consistency? I, I, it's different for everyone. I don't post every day. I, I try to show up in some way, shape, or form on social media um, at, at least three to four times a week. Okay. But for me, sometimes that's not always the same way. It might not always be posting something, but I'll actively go out and engage with other people. Remember, it's a two it's a two way door. So social media isn't just sharing your information with the world. You have to go out and engage with other people's information that are also doing the same thing. So. I might not post seven days a week. I might post two or three times a week, but I genuinely try to go out every day and comment on somebody's feed, show up on someone else's platform to support what they're doing. And what that does, just think about that for a second. If you're showing up on my feed and I have a relatively large Instagram crowd and you're commenting on my feed, and you're just doing it because you genuinely wanted to say something, all of the people that see my content are now going to see your, your, your comment on my feed. And they're like, oh, who's this Gordon guy that wrote this really funny, quitty, quippy thing right there? I'm going to go check out how Gordon Coyle is. So a lot of people, that's most people's habits of they look at comments, they'll click on Gordon, and they'll see that you have a fun page, you have a YouTube channel, and that's how they find you. So mm-hmm. it's, a two, it's a two-way door. You have to you have to engage with people and you have to be consistent. And, and that strategy is different for everyone. I would say start small, you know, with a, with a strategy. I'm going to post two pieces of content every single week. And I'm going to go out and put a comment on 10 pages every week. I'm just going to drop somebody a line somewhere. And maybe I'll send out five DMs and just find some sort of a strategy that works best for you and then consistently do that and then scale it just like you would anything else as you become more comf- comfortable and confident with it. Mm -hmm. I think attaching a goal uh, or a metric to even social is important because it's too easy to say, I just don't want to do it this week or I'm too busy today or whatever. And then two or three days goes by and the next thing you know, two or three weeks goes by and you're kind of out of the flow of it and your community has kind of forgotten about Gordon Coyle or whoever. So I think that that kind of like having a certain number of connections that you touch every day is an important part of what social is about. A, a, a better approach that I would suggest, especially if you're a newbie to this, is batch your content. 
spend, spend one day, just like you do with your business plan, just like you do with your marketing, just like looking at your accounting and your payroll, whatever it is that you look at for your business, devote some time to your social media. And at the outset of every month, create a plan by putting together a content calendar, putting and batching all of your content. There's all sorts of free tools out there like Planoly and Later and all sorts of different tools where you can post your content in advance, schedule it for a very specific time and just let it do its thing. And that way you have all that stuff done up front and don't have to worry about trying to retrofit it and then get caught up in that cyclone you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And for the business owner or the business professional that's like we talked about earlier that, oh, I'm thinking about doing this or I'm thinking about doing that, um, you know, connecting with a firm like yours is probably a good first step if they're not, if they don't have the time, they don't have the expert, the technical expertise or the resources coming to somebody like you to help build a plan and execute it is, is probably a good thing, right? I mean, obviously I'm going to say yes to that, but you don't have to use us. You have to have a budget to use us. But what I would suggest, if you can't, if you aren't able to put money into a, into your social media, um, I, I would suggest starting from ground zero, which is putting money first into your branding. Re be very, very clear on the strategy of how your business, and branding is not your business card or your logo. Branding is your business. It's your story. It's your message. It's your star seed. It's your superpower. It's, it's why you went into insurance. It's what is it that makes Gordon Coyle different from the million other people selling, selling insurance? Is it because you have coffee with everybody once a week? Is it because you have a networking event that you started and because you take this hands-on approach to, you know, working on, a, on, the, on the full life cycle of, of insurance products? I, I don't know what that is, but being very clear about what your value proposition is, that's your brand. And then creating a strategy around how you're going to support that brand with your social media content or your content in general. And, and that doesn't always have to be social media. It might be something else. It's how you answer the phone calls. It's your voicemail greeting. It's, it's literally every single moment you're out living, eating, breathing your life, how you show up. That's your brand because people are going to just going to start to associate you with that. So I, I can't tell you how many times I'm in a strange location in, in other countries where people have, this is 100% true, where people have literally come up to me or my partner, Lisa, because she's way more famous and be like, you're that girl from Instagram, blah, blah, blah. I saw you on this. Like literally we were in Mexico in Tulum and somebody came up to her at the resort we were having at the bar and knew who she was. Wow. From, she, this woman was from, was from like Belgium or something. It wasn't like, and it happens all the time, like literally all the time. And so having some sort of purpose around that and being very clear on that, what your brand represents and the value you bring to the world and then creating content that speaks to that, that's where I would start. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I haven't had anybody come up and say, Hey, you're that insurance guy from New York, right? <laughs> Man, you never know, Gordon. Now that you're putting that out in the atmosphere, it probably will happen. <laughs> if you're consistent, if you're consistent, you never know. Um, so you've kind of built this multifaceted business. Um, and I'm just curious, how, how did you grow into it? You talked about it, that you're kind of a serial entrepreneur, but this is a pretty unique, um, sort of business operation. How did you kind of grow this craft of yours? It, it, it almost sort of happened by accident, but in looking back, it, it's been, uh, it's been a journey in the making. You know, I started with photography. Um, my brand of photography is sort of different than a traditional photographer. I've, I've shot a lot of weddings in my life. I still do shoot some weddings, not as many as I used to. Um, but, but I noticed that there was one common thread in everything that I did. And it was really centered around the relationships that I was building with, with my clients. Um, you know, I've been, I've been in business roughly since 2005 and I still shoot families that I photographed back in 2005, like literally still shooting their kids. Or I recently shot a family whose wedding I photographed who now has a kid going off to college. Like for me, that's just always been what I've done. I've connected with people. I've built these relationships with people. And so I started to see this common thread. And then around 2015 to 2017, I started seeing a shift with social media happening. I started seeing all the different ways that people were starting to connect and the world was getting smaller and smaller and everyone was jumping on the bandwagon of social media. And, and I just sort of thought there's gotta be a way to capitalize on what I do best and then simultaneously talk about that to other people. And so we started doing workshops, um, educating other photographers and doing that sort of stuff. And that sort of segued into 
we were getting hired to do consultative strategy for small business owners and photographers and people in the wedding industry that really didn't know how to do social media or didn't know how to create cool photos. I started doing a, an iPhone class on how to take a good photo with, with your iPhone. Like, like the iPhone is this brilliant piece of technology, but most time people don't really understand the basics of photography and lighting. So they kind of butcher something that could have been much better. So I did a little class on that. And then it just sort of snowballed from there and started getting bigger and better. And we just said, let's launch a real brand that does this. So that's how Amazing. it began. That's great. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so you guys also have a podcast, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was a little amused by uh, sometimes you're a little impolite and I... <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> so it's an extension of everything else we're doing. It's it's our time to invite really interesting people that are doing some really interesting things on the planet that you might not ever hear from. So I've had an ayahuasca healer on from the jungles of Brazil. He spent 20 years literally doing a mentorship, living in the jungles with the shaman for most of his teenage years. And we had wow. him on the podcast. We had We've had business coaches, we've had yogis, we've had, we have a sex therapist from Beverly Hills coming on the show next week. It's like, so it's just people who are doing really cool shit that you might never get a chance to hear from or hear about. And so we decided to launch this podcast to have sort of these impolite conversations, if you will, that are censor free about what people are really doing and the gifts that they're bringing to the planet and how they're making people, the planet a little bit better. That's awesome. And so what's the name of that podcast? A little impolite podcast. A little impolite podcast. How could you forget that? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And I guess it's available on all platforms. Yeah, you can find it anywhere. Just Google little impolite podcast. <clears throat> It'll pop up on Spotify, Apple, or on YouTube, all the major platforms. Cool. So I'll have to look for that. And I'm encouraging everybody else to take a look and subscribe. And uh, I'm always encouraging people to subscribe to my podcast. It's hard <laughs> to get them, get them there. But uh, anything, you know, we can do to, to help a little impolite, get a little further along in the rankings. That's good news. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. It's, yeah. It's kind yeah. Of a... um, well, we're now as maybe we talked a little bit at the outset, how we're niching down our business. Um, we've changed a little bit about how Sprout operates. Um, really kind of honing in on the things and the crafts that we do best, which is centered around photography and content. Um, and then, so we've changed that business a little bit and we're launching our first ever um, physical uh, photography workshop series starting in June. So for the rest of the month, we've got four planned for the rest of the year. Um, we have uh, one in Charlotte on the end of June. Uh, that's going to be really cool. It's called the Photography House. We're locking eight photographers and content creators in a house in Charlotte. And for three days, we're going to have this immersion incubator of photography, branding, education, and just getting to know each other. And it's, it, it evolves into a mastermind after that of those eight people. And then the month after that, we'll do the same thing, but we'll be in a different city. So we're going to be bouncing around to different cities every month um, with the photography house. We've rented out, we've got a 20 bedroom home in Charlotte that we've rented out and There'll be 14 people, a private chef, us doing workshops all day long. It's like, it's something I have been working on for about five years and it's finally materializing and I can't fucking wait. So. <laughs> it sounds pretty amazing. Yeah. It's a really I mean, cool idea. Yeah. And so you've got a lot of energy around just trying new things. I, I mean, I guess you could say that or I have attention deficit disorder. I can't stay on one thing. Well, it's a little point. <laughs> yeah. Like I think the purpose, honestly, so I've struggled with this and they don't teach this stuff in school, right? You know, like go to school, sit in a row, listen to the teacher, become a robot, go to college, get your degree, work for the corporation, sit there for 50 years, retire, and then live out the remaining 10 years of your life and linger and, and whatever with whatever money you were hopefully able to save. And I, I, I just always was like, what is the point of that? Like, that makes no sense to me. I'm going to spend the last waning years of my life where I possibly can barely walk in a wheelchair. And I'm going to want to enjoy that for 10 years on some pension that I, that I saved over. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. So I started looking for different ways to, to create and do things that I'm really good at. And that's how I got into the entrepreneurial world. And, and even that, like, I think, I think our role as humans on this planet is to create a better version of ourselves every single day. What can I do tomorrow that was a little bit better than it did yesterday? And I don't think that means I'm not satisfied. It just means that 
I want to continually get better at something. And, and life is a process. It's a journey, right? I'm not trying to be cliche, but as I've grown and matured and my business has grown and matured and my relationships have grown and matured, different opportunities sort of have come into that space. And so I always look at it as a way to, how can we take this gift of being here alive to, to create something, to make everyone else around us and the planet a little bit better. And, and so, yeah, like I'm always trying to just find new things to just keep getting bigger and better around something. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of what you're talking about and, and being open and I think also the creative side of your business helps ideation of what's potentially out there for business and how you create partnerships and collaborate and all that kind of stuff. Whereas, <clears throat> excuse me, like a lot of business owners like myself may not have that uh, level of creativity that lets the mind run free to say, oh, this guy over here would be a great person to collaborate with. Um, why don't we get a bunch of people in a room for a weekend? It, I think we creatives and non-creatives have a different way, right brain, left brain kind of thinking. So not that that's a reason or an excuse not to try, because I think everybody that gets out of their shell every once in a while benefits from that. And you mentioned a mastermind. Um, I've been running a mastermind for several years <clears throat> and recently expanded it and bringing three new people into the group. It was like invigorating. It was just, you know, like all the other people were like, oh, I'm so glad we've got new members. We've got new blood. We've got new things to talk about, new ideas, new ways of thinking about something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get so stuck in our ways that we, we resist those changes. So it's kind of refreshing to hear your, your take on it. And sometimes I have to remind myself, don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I don't know if I agree with that take on the some people are more creative than others. I, I think that some people have chosen to embrace that that gift and okay. expand upon it. I, I think you have just as much creativity inside you as I do. You might not have explored that a little bit as much as I have, perhaps. And, and then again, there are people who are doing markedly more than I am. So um, I, I would suggest that everybody has the ability to do that. We've been told for years that we're not supposed to do that. We've been told for years that we should just sort of stick into our little box paradigm that's been created for us and live that out. I think that there are probably innumerable ideas that you've come up with over your lifetime that you thought that would be really fun if I could do that or if I could make that invention or if I could tweak this little thing. And just like your question at the outset of, of, the, of the program, you know, what would you say to newbies? I would say the same thing. The way you live your life is the way you should live your social media. Find things that empower you and make you delighted and, and see how you can make money from that and how you can provide that as a, a scalable model of something. How can you rinse and repeat something so that someone else will need that service? How can you solve a problem? Whatever it is, and then start exploring that. I, 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 don't, I don't know that I agree with you. I think you have a massive amount of creativity. You just might not have tapped it yet. Yeah. The fact that you're doing this podcast and you've launched a mastermind is evidence that I'm correct on that. <laughs> you're not just selling insurance every day. Like you're ob obviously doing something else because you're curious. What else could I possibly do? Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe that was a, a poor analogy, but, and I do have a level of creativity. Uh, you know, I enjoy photography. I enjoy woodworking. I enjoy a whole bunch of stuff that I do with my hands. So yeah, that, that's positive, but I just kind of like when I, I'll, I'll, my peers, my friends, my networking partners, and they tell me, I don't know if I can do that. That's what I was kind of getting at. Mm -hmm. I just think that they're hesitant. Um, and maybe it's a poor excuse to blame it on right brain versus left brain creativity because. I think people are afraid of failure, obviously. I, yeah. I was for a long time. I, 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 um, I was on a journey of, of where I am and I've got a lot of work to go. I think. I, 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 went to, I went to college to a school I didn't want to go to. I didn't even want to go to college, but I went there because I was on a scholarship and I was like, I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. So for a large part of my life, I, I lived in that, that paradigm of fear. I was sort of always exploring different things, but I, I'm a markedly different human today at 45 years old than I was at 25 years old in terms of comfort, comfortability with myself and confidence around what I can offer to the world and that sort of thing. And I think that's most people. We're just sort of 
We're scared of finding out what we don't know. And we're scared of getting into that space. And it's like, um, I'm here by myself. What am I supposed to do now? And it's like, yeah, it's fucking scary, man, being an entrepreneur. <laughs> your entire livelihood is in your hands. And, yeah. and you you either sink or swim. And most of us sink early on. I've I've failed many times at many things. Many of many projects that I've tried didn't work out. Sprout, the original offering of what my company Sprout did failed. It didn't work out. And so I had to pivot and adapt. So I think if we can just if we can just sort of be willing to step into our own power and not focus on the success or failure of it right away and just sort of enjoy the, I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. Like enjoy the journey of the failures. How can you learn from each of those steps of the way and make it a little bit better the next time? Mm -hmm. And don't give up, man. Don't give up. Yeah. Just yeah. Keep I, going think, at it. I think that's a, that's a key piece of it. I also believe that people are very concerned of failure and if they can't open a book and follow the instructions on how to do something, or be led on how to do something, they fear trying it because of that fear of failure as well. I think that's a big thing. That, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah, that people just hesitate because they, they don't know what the, the right thing is. And in, what I've kind of learned is that there is no real right, then there's really no real wrong. Yeah, you just got to try it and experiment, but you do need to look at the results, um, whether that's Instagram or um uh, YouTube or whatever your metrics are saying, what I'm starting to really understand and learn is what people respond to, you know, viewer dis duration on a particular video, the, the number of views in a set number of days, like what is working right? What's not working right? Try to do a little bit more of the things that seem to be working right. Does that aid in the overall growth of your channel or your, your, whatever your platform is? It's, which I just find really very interesting. Yeah. It's a data driven world for sure. And you need to understand and how to interpret that data for sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. I said absolutely, some of it is absolutely. intuitive. Yeah. I mean, when you look at it, you kind of say, Oh, that's why that's working. And that's why it's not working. So you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, you're for your products and your insurance, what type of insurance do you sell? So I sell business insurance, uh, property, business liability, insurance. workers' comp, DNO, ENO insurance, cyber insurance. And what I try to focus on are the unique policy forms that a lot of brokers are not really adept at. And then once I get my foot in the door talking about, for example, directors and officers liability insurance, the client invariably says, well, what about all this other stuff I've got? And they give me a big book off of the shelf and say, can you do this too? Sure, I can do that too. Mm. Um, so, and your market is a domestic or international market. I don't, I don't know much about the insurance industry. It's domestic. So your YouTube channel centers around education around that sort of space and, and how to make the right decisions and the right, right products. That's right. great. What the real concerns are, what the risks are lately. I've been publishing a lot of content around cyber risk because it's such a, uh, kind of timely in the news sort of risk that a lot of business owners really have now not addressed, which kind of shocks me that, you know, they haven't purchased cyber insurance. And then when you say, well, have you thought about cyber insurance? And they're like, well, what's that? <laughs> and you take a step back and you're like, oh, I just take it for granted that everybody knows what cyber insurance is. And then that kind of forces me yeah. to recalibrate my content to say, oh, we have to take a step back and educate on what this is and why they need it. Not necessarily, we don't have to go deep. It, it's better to go kind of high level at that point. That's great. So you're sort of demystifying a, a lot of knowledge that people might not have around what, what insurance products offer and the value that they provide to them. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of it. Also trying to answer common questions uh, that they might have or, uh, you know, there's always a big thing around, well, what does it cost? And in the insurance world, especially business insurance, it's very hard to say this policy is going to cost this much because it's based on so many different underwriting factors. <clears throat> so what I try to do is give people an idea. Of this is, you know, the range for a small business in this kind of industry. This is what this would cost in this kind of business size and, and break it down and give them the factors of like, this is why it costs what it costs. These are the cost drivers. These are the factors in underwriting um, and talk to that kind of issue as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So do you show up as a guest on podcasts as well? 
Uh, I'm just starting that journey myself now. I've been asked uh, to show up. And at first I was kind of like, oh, why do you want me on your podcast? And I'm like, what kind of an idiot am I? I'm asking people to yeah, come on yeah, my yeah. podcast and it's just <laughs> to tell their story. So it's like, that's it. Like, Thing, you know, at, like, at a fraction, at a fraction of the resource cost. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant strategy. If you don't want to put together your own podcast, you get to borrow other people's audiences. So I highly encourage that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, one of the fellows I was talking to this morning about it, he said, Oh, I've been thinking about starting a podcast and he's a financial advisor. So there are some compliance and regulatory issues that he has to jump through some hoops for. But that's a great idea, like reversing it and saying, well, rather than having your own podcast that has to get cleared through compliance, show up on somebody's podcast once a week and then you publish it on your own channel or something. It's a good idea. Absolutely. It's, it's a great investment. It's why I spend the money on doing that because it's easier to show up on someone else's audience. As you know, producing a podcast and finding guests and doing all the, the post-production around it, it's, it's a lot of time and energy that goes into it. Yep. So if you have an outlet where you can show up as a guest to talk about your brand and use other people's audiences, dude, go forth. Yeah. Like, go yeah. forth as much as you possibly can, can uh, uh, afford to do. And there are services out there that you can subscribe to. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe that if you're, if you want to be a guest, you may pay a small fee to a booking agency, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, it's economical, yeah. I guess is what it comes down to. Oh, absolutely. It's um, you, you, you basically, they're your PR. So we have a PR agency that promotes us okay. to show up on other people's platforms, be uh, do writing for, for different platforms and audiences and magazines and that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's a, it's an investment that, you know, if you don't have any sort of a PR footprint and the only way to get a PR footprint is to get a PR footprint. And so we have found the path of least resistance is to do that. And now we have opportunities coming down, you know, all sorts of different channels for us now. That's great. Great. So Devo, yeah. we had a good conversation. We're kind of running up against, you know, some timing here and I want to be respectful of your time. Anything we didn't talk about that you'd like to kind of put into the conversation as we wrap it up. No, I, I appreciate the time, Gordon. Thank you. It's been a fun conversation with you. I, I think if you want to get some more information from us, you can find me on my Instagram channel. It's Fusion Photog. Um, I'd like to put that shameless plug out there. Um, our website is sproutconnectors.com. Um, and anybody, I, you know, I get asked this question all the time. Well, where do I begin? It's just overwhelming. I, I think you begin by sitting down and thinking about a few things that you really love doing, that you're really good at, and something that you could arguably talk about as an expert in some way, shape or form, and then get out there and start talking about that and creating video around that. I mean, you have the tools at your disposal. If you have a phone, there's no excuse not to, if you have a cell phone, you can create content on a regular basis. And I would encourage you to just start by starting because once you do, you'll start getting confidence from doing that. You'll start figuring out what you like and don't like talking about and what you're good at and what you're better at and all those sorts of things. And if you, like I said, at the outset, if you be purposeful and consistent, you'll start to, you'll start to have some leverage around it and, and don't focus on the numbers. Stay away from the numbers. The numbers are meaningless. If you're, if, if it's just dribble, just focus on providing real credible value to people and, and, and the, the rest of it will sort of take care of itself. That's great advice. Um, and if somebody wanted to reach out to you and talk about strategy and how to, you know, create a client relationship with you, how would they do that? Yeah, you can find us on sproutconnectors.com. My partner, Lisa and I, that's our uh, co-owned business. Um, and you can also see more of Lisa at Lisa Staff Photo if you're interested to, to learn more about her. Um, she's, like I said out the outset, she's considerably more famous um, and she's got a lot of value seed to offer. Um, and then, but the website is sproutconnectors.com. Great. Devo, great conversation. Really appreciate it. It was a, a, a conversation in an area that I really enjoy talking about because I have a lot of passion to this sort of, for me, new area of developing business and uh, connections and growth and everything like that. So I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate the time. Sorry about being late at the hour. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. It happens. So folks, my name is Gordon Coyle. I'm the host of the New York Business Leaders podcast. If you have an interesting story that you'd like to tell, 
give me a call, drop me an email. My contact info, as long as well as Devo's, will be in the show notes. We'll see you on YouTube and on the podcast. Thank you. That's it for this week's episode of the New York Business Leaders Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode. In the meantime, find more interviews and resources at nybusinessleaders.com.